One of the key uh, weaknesses or deficiencies in, in pain medicine globally is lack of knowledge, um, not necessarily in the pain world, but very often in, in our clients, our patients. They are afraid of uh, dealing with pain because they've heard from generations that pain is something you have to live with, it's all in your mind, there's a somatic and a you know, sensory component to this that doesn't make any, that any, doesn't make any sense. Um, and of course that's not quite true. We know we have lots of very solid evidence from animal studies, clinical evidence, clinical data now across a whole range of conditions that that's not the case. So there's that lack of knowledge. And then that transpires across into our medical edu educational schools. Very often pain is not a topic of preference among our undergraduate program. And by the time they become interested in pain medicine or pain interventional, their, their careers may already be influenced in other areas. So we tend to be very late coming to harness these good physicians that might find pain medicine a great career pathway. So we have to work on getting that information out in the early stage of the undergraduate programs and bringing pain out into the world much more. I think WIP has a great role in that. We're very focused on the postgraduate elements, but I think we need to now uh, integrate our undergraduates and see more young physicians, young doctors becoming involved with us and understanding there's a fantastic career opportunity here and helping their patients going forward. So that's the basic knowledge gap that I think we can work on. From a, a postgraduate or a professional perspective, uh, keeping our programs of education going at the highest level. We're delighted that we have FIF, the FIP exam and the SIPS exam. We've over 1,200 individuals who are now certified in this area and that's growing annually. We'll be very close in the next three to four years to have over 2,000 people globally. And that's a phenomenal statement of any assessment, professional examination with psychometric assessment. assessment. It's the only exam globally that can really stand up to test of time. I think it's a credit to all the people who've gone way before me that have built this up from FIP number one, FIP number two, now to FIP number 1200 plus. This is fantastic and we can't leave that go and the, the, you know, the future really does rely on the history that we've developed over the years and I think this is something we must acknowledge and build on. And now we have individuals globally. We have 25 different centres right across the world who are intrigued, excited about delivering uh, good care to our uh, pain patients globally. And that's, that's fantastic. Um, our congresses are growing year by year. The strength of it is coming great, greater. There's now more te med tech industry involved in the pain world than ever before. And WIP needs to give them a platform as well. So working with these partners, I think, is a very good way of moving forward. Um, and ultimately, it brings better quality information to our pain physicians who can deliver to the patients. And then that's, that is the key goal. So that's the weakness, but also that's the future. And I think once we recognise our gaps, we can build on these and make ourselves stronger. The, the standardisation of care um, really comes across from an examination basis, which is the, the fellowship and the FIP and then the ultrasound based one. This is a unique exam. It is a psychometrically assessed examination. Uh, weighted on three different platforms, uh, pure academic knowledge in terms of uh, paperwork, a, a very uh, rigid cadaver workshop based assessment that is set out on a very good protocol of what needs to be done and then finally a viva or an examination of how an individual would work with a real-time clinical case. These are assessed and the scores if you like are amalgamated to produce this end product. Now that's a standardisation that is equivalent to any uh, top level professional grading system that can be done and this is uh, something that individuals take on as part of their day to day duties, as part of their career. This is not something they sit in college for a year and specifically do. So I think it gives them great credit that they add this amount of extra work on their day to day work to, to bring up the level. It's a sheer mark of the commitment that is needed for this exam but also that the the profile of the individuals are completely committed to bringing the standard up and that's why these exams are seen as so important for many people across the, the, across the globe. You must remember in some countries uh, this is the exam before they can become a consultant or before they can step up further in their career and that's really exciting and we, we should be building on that. 
some of our developing areas, say for example Taiwan, South America, across Asia, this is going to be their marker as well. So again, that just underlines how important and how strong this assessment is as a true assessment of clarity, of uh, clinical thinking, and just gives patients globally a standard of care that is second to none. Um, we are, I'm going to say three languages, we may have to check this, I'm sorry. I know it's English, Spanish and Port Portuguese is very close because of the Brazilian link to it itself. But the ambition would be to bring it out into different languages as necessary. There are implications in bringing it into different languages to maintain the standard and the psychometric analysis and then the interpretation of the, the questions as they translate across the different languages. So that is a challenge, but uh, those three, three areas are, are very firm. In, in my point, I'm almost 10 years in the administration side of WIP, having started with founding the, uh, the, the, the section right from grassroots through into hosting the World Congress in Dublin 27, 2018 and, and enjoying that. And then ultimately it, working through the, the, the structure of behind the scenes of WIP. Um, and understanding the intricate nature, the pros, the cons, where we want to be in the next number of years. And build, based on that, that's where my vision is for WIP, that we, we must stretch further. We must now bring more people in, make this much more accessible right across the globe and bring in a whole governance strategy, bring more people into the committee structure and ensure that what has been achieved by all our predecessors, going back into Raj, going back through Dr. Gabor's and going back into Sir Nerdna and etc., that this work is not lost, that it can only get stronger going forward. And I'm very pleased to see that there are so many people who started way back in the day and they're still members here, they're still coming to give speeches and talks and workshops and they're still as committed now as they've ever been. And that really underpins the future, which is extremely strong and I believe that WIP can only grow and I think it's only a matter of time before we hit that number of 2,000 uh, FIPS and SIPS globally um, and that's going to be very soon.